Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Valkabaladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void! Today, gonna be a match between Rex and Haz. Here in 2000 Atmospheres, top right, we've got ourselves a Taiwanese player. It is Rex. He is red today. And in the bottom left, his fellow countryman, it is Haz. <laughs> what the heck is this spinning logo here, Haz? Has is very known for his cheesy strategies and his excellent micro. His late game is not as strong, but it's strong enough to be a professional StarCraft II player. <laughs> Just laughing about the spinning logo here. Alright, so Overlord scouting across the map. A gateway first here from Has and a 16, 18, 17 here from Rex. This is from Dreamhack Summer. And it's a ZVP featuring has I do like has he's very fun to watch again his micro is exceptional and he's pretty much the reason that the immortal got uh, nerfed to cost more and the war prism got nerfed and its pickup range because man has his warp prism shuttle maneuvers Oof, were fairly unstoppable so blizzard said nope no more Mortals cost more, and shuttle pickup range is not as good. And everybody said, hooray, except for Haz, because he would deploy them against Zerg, Terran, and Perotos. Whew, with lethal accuracy. Third base? Sub two minutes? Rex. I like this a lot. I really like getting a fast third base. Honestly, not so much against Haz, who again, traditionally, Cheesy player, good, you know, like known for showing up with super fast stuff that can kill you. But guess what? This is a one gate expand into Cybercore. First gas, second gas, second pylon. Everything is cool. Rex, you gambled and you won. Your overlord got over here. You saw what was going on. You breathed a big sigh of relief. You're running for your life because that either could be an adept or a stalker coming out and you don't know. So you're going to position yourself to run over to this little hydrodrome thing, which is like an underwater pool thing for I don't know science is that just like recreation do you swim in there I don't know what that is so there we go run run Terry the overlord disappear from your enemy yeah disappeared hiding overlord perch spot okay so getting the third base up is nice but it does leave you vulnerable for a minute and you don't have a second queen until now there we go second queen just now popping out creep spread happening again creep tumor more important than first inject Right? That's something that Serral does, something a lot of Zerg players do. And if you're playing Zerg, get that tumor down before you do your first inject with this queen at the natural. It's gr really, really important for creep spread. The sooner it gets down, the better it is for you. And if you're not creep spreading, creep spread. I know it takes a lot of APM. I know it takes a lot of attention. But for heaven's sakes, do it. Do it. Plus one attack on the way pretty early and a Twilight Council. Oh, is this some, some kind of resonating wave of that plus one all in? Honestly, again, this doesn't count technically as cheese. Well, I don't know. It, it's just such a common thing. Are we going to get... Okay. Oh, charge. What? Charge lot all in. Where is your robo is my question. If you're going to do this kind of a thing off the two base, you need a robo to make warp prisms for instant warp ins on the other side of the map. Which... <laughs> It's just funny because it used to be that pylons, wherever they were, got a two-second warping. Which is why early, early, like beta StarCraft II stuff, four gates were very popular. Which, by the way, I was watching some old Day9 dailies the other day, and he was talking about four gates during the beta. And I was like, wait, I thought that came later. No, man, the four gate's been around for a longer time than I thought. And then Zergs figured out how to deal with it eventually, like maybe six months or so into the actual release of the game, and they were cool. So, Overlord sees... Oh, beautiful. Seize the Twilight Council. We're searching. All right. So, roaches are going to be good here no matter what. This is a lot. Oh, this timing. This beautiful timing. Ooh, it is a dark shrine. Uh, okay. Well, it's enough zealous to keep this third base alive, which is nice. And there's your robo, but a third base. So, Haz is like, I'm going to be super aggressive with a lot of zealots, but also take a third base behind it. Dude, Rex. You absolute baller of a man. He's getting some great trades here. He just killed, he just wiped out the entire zealot population. Okay, two just warped in. 
Oh, there's your charge. There's another zealot warping in. But keeping the pressure on Haz's side of the map is kind of genius. Look at this. Look at it. Look at the Dark Shrine warping in. It doesn't look special, but it is. There's your warp prism. We talked about that a second ago. Uh, third base now warping in. And yeah, Haz had to warp in a bunch of stuff that kind of just died in order to keep this thing alive. So I say it's a win for Rex. Right? He's got a ton of workers. He's busting out some roaches now. He was droning up during that attack. He wasn't making more lings to throw more money at the problem. He was making roaches to deal with the incoming and guaranteed charge a lot attack here. So there are the roaches. More zealots are here. But again, Haz has a third base. This isn't all in. He's still making probes. He's just, is he trying to make Rex think it is an all in? Like, hey, cut your drone. No, nah, man, that's 12 drones. Rex is not panicking. Rex is droning up super hard. He's going to try to take a third base right here fairly soon. And that's, this is just a feint. It honestly kind of feels like just a feint out of Haz, which is awesome. The links say, is your front door open? It is not, but that's a free probe. I guess we can kill probes. That's totally fine. But yeah, protecting against Ling attacks here by throwing up two pylons there. Having a couple sentries for horse fields for further protection. And a Dark Templar is on the way. Is he going to be made, however, into, into an Archon? Or is this going to be a Dark Templar? It's just one. So the one guy is lit. Oh, we don't have spores! Rex, you're doing everything so well! <laughs> oh no! He has a lair! Oh, he has an overseer. Alright, oh, that's still eight drones killed. Eight! Because you didn't have a spore in your base. It's like, well, Haz didn't open Stargate. I didn't need a spore, Falcon. Shut up. Well, that's a fair point. But you know, if you had a spore, you wouldn't have lost eight drones there. Oh, that hurts. That really hurts. Where's your fourth base, too? Come on, Rex. Come on, Rex. Where's your fourth base? Has his three base in here right now. Lings, Banelings, Ravagers, plus two missile attack on the way for Rex. Plus one attack is done for Has. Working on plus one armor. Almost complete. And another Warp Prism. So Rex trying to see what's going on over here. It's a nice little Zealot Sentry. Good force field. That's an okay. That's a better force field call. Roaches on the wrong side of the force field to always die. But these zealots dying, big problem. Guess what we just warped in? A million zealots into the main base. Everybody hates this. Terran, Protoss, and Zerg hate a million charge lots getting warped into your main base. These queens can't even deal with the war prison because they're too busy dying to these charge lots, which are the good units. More warping in here. The roaches are coming over to deal with it. Uh, the immortals are kind of just being left alone. Oh, it's a free roach. Kind of just being left alone over here. Yeah, double prong attacks. So many zelotes. Okay, well, um, I'm feeling like this might just be it. Nine drones killed. Army supply is uh, 75 to 42. It's a big lead in army value here for Rex, but... Oh, the, it, oh okay, all right, all right. The ability to warp in there. Pretty good, but does Rex does shut that down. Zealot's kind of getting cleaned up in here, but 13 drones die. And finally, the last Zealot is gone. Finally, the creep is clear of Protoss infestation. And Rex is like, well, I have this whole army here. I might as well counterattack with it, right? 74 to 38 army supply is kind of a lot. So he's like, all right, we're going to take some time to knock down these rocks for additional attack path, which is going to give Haz more time. Haz is getting a fourth base behind it. Well, that's the sound that rocks make when they explode. All right, well, here goes nothing. Rawr, kill the Zelotes. The Warp Prism can't warp in stuff because, the, oh, Ravagers will kill it. What a flank, though. Uh, trying to hold against these charge lots. They're too good. They're too powerful. The immortals are too strong. That's a 10 kill immortal, yo. Where are you, 10 kill immortal? Are you in the warp prison? You probably are. Nope. Oh, oh, the warp prison. Hey, remember when I was like, the warp prison micro, though? Yep. This is what I was here for. The warp prison micro. Counter, counter attack. Says <laughs> has. 12 kills, 12 kills. Four kills and five kills each. Look at these roaches just... Uh, me oh! no. <laughs> I talked about it! I talked about the War Prism Micro! Okay, one immortal died. Two immortals died. Oh! War Prism got sniped. <gasps> Has took a calculated risk warping in on the creep and he paid for it with his life. He paid for it with his Warp Prism, which is his life. 
56 to 61 workers, 62 to 30 army supply. But you know what? Having double the army supply of Protoss doesn't matter as much if there's fancy pantsy Warp Prism Immortals on the other side. That's a 19 kill Immortal. See, you can have double the army value of Zerg, but if the Immortals are getting 20 kills each, it doesn't matter. Hooray! Man. <laughs> Honestly, Protoss sometimes. Woo. See, no fourth base still. Rex needs a fourth. He just... He needs a fourth and he needs a fifth, but he's so worried about these attacks. Has is able to get this much pressure on while taking four bases. This is insane. Has, you're a good unit. Okay, well, uh, some drones are gonna die. Cool stuff. The immortals cannot be as immortal anymore because of, you know, not having the war prism around, but geez, this, you have to kite against the zealots and the immortals get free shots the whole time. That's a dead immortal, and uh, across the piles, okay, they force the immortals away, so zoning both ways here. The War Prism is back, and it is stupendous. Oh, lost one. It can't, it can't carry three immortals, but the juggling could be awesome, I guess. Hmm, 75 to 40 army supply. Once again, 50 army supply. This is just Rex has more army, but it is less cost efficient, and if he's not taking a fourth base anytime soon, this is looking extremely... Super Mega Ultra Lightning Bad. Hey, robotics facility. Get wrecked, son. The charge lots are just proving to be so darn effective here. Like, insanely effective here. I mean, a lot of them have died, don't get me wrong. But they bought time. 91 Zealots have died. There are 14 on the field. Rex is getting a fourth. Oh yeah, four bases to a four basing already Protoss. Does it feel like it's too little too late to anybody else? It feels like it might be too little too late. Here for Rex. Um, this has gonna transition into anything else as he need to. He's making more warp gates, but you know, more immortals. Getting plus two attack. There you go, it's done now. Melee attack level one is also complete. Something, something complete. Love this too. You want a fifth base? Deal with zealots. How about up here, maybe? Up here's not a bad idea. Army value 92 to 70, but again, we're reaching the point where having no spellcasters against Protoss is going to be a problem. Like, Fungals would be pretty good here. Um, Blinding Cloud could be good. Abduct could be pretty good here too. Vipers or Infestors would be a good way to go. I mean, if you're starting to get up to 13 minutes, you don't have an infestation pit. Yeah, it's just hard. It is hard for you to win a good ZVP uh, against a good Protoss. Look at this base, too. Has has just been completely unmolested here today. Is That one attack that killed this Robo was the closest he's gotten to losing something. As far as buildings are concerned, yeah, that one Robo. That's it. That is it. And, I mean, I guess there was that one Ling attack against the third... Banelings against Blink Stalkers in the hands of Haz. It's a desperation play, though. Now you warp in. Oh, more Stalkers. All right, fine. We just do Stalkers. They're actually they do bonus damage versus Roaches and uh, bonus damage versus Buildings and well, yeah. Now the army supply is way too close for comfort. Bunch of Changelings getting tossed down to try to kind of mess with. The AI here, trying to come on top of this, but the blink forward from has the Immortals putting in that work back here. That's a 14 kill Immortal, ladies and gentlemen. Base down, Zerg down, has is your winner here. It's not, I know, I know Rex is still here, but look at the supply, look at the base count, look at the worker count. The army value is even, which is never good for a Zerg, especially if they're going Roach Ravager. The supply is not a good way to tell who's going to win the battle by saying, oh, it's even supply. No, nope. Roaches and Ravagers are not super cost efficient. I, I know Rex is sticking in, but there it is. <laughs> As wins game one of our sneaky two for today between these two players. Well done to the Protoss. That was uh, brutal. It was a brutal, brutal look. Who is still in this game? Brutal look at what ZVP can be in the hands of, again, an elite, elite Protoss player, which has, is, you know, Rex isn't Serral. He's not Rainer, right? He's not any of these guys that are elite, elite Zerg players, but he's a professional Zerg player. He's won money. He's good at this game. And Haz is just like, nah, 
I'm going to pressure you to death while expanding more than you do. And just that you can't win if that's the play. Uh, DT, yeah, that one DT getting eight drone kills, I feel like, was kind of the first ball. The first ball, first bit of the snowball, right, that started rolling down that hill. And it just got worse and worse and worse and worse over time. Resources lost are 25,000 for Rex and only 20,000 for Haz. And, uh, yeah, just the cost effectiveness of the army. Seven immortals died. There were three remaining. So, again, not immortal. <laughs> the immortals weren't impossible to kill. They were just very hard to kill. And the zealots, too. Just kiting, 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 kiting while the immortals get those shots. Good stuff. I think Rex also bumbled up there by going for that ling attack on the third base, not being able to cancel it. If you can cancel that third base with lings, it's two thumbs up. It's primo. But if you can't kill it, uh, then you made those lings instead of making drones, and your economy is going to suffer a little bit, and then you're in trouble. But you can recover from that. It's just and then the more stuff happened. The zealots coming into the main base, killing even more and more drones. The zealots getting into the third base. And the natural. Brutal. So that's game one. Let's go into game number two of this little sneaky twofer for your Wednesday. Hit that like button if you're enjoying it so far, and we'll be right back. Game number two is here on a light shade. Top left, it is Rex. Bottom right, it is Haz. We gotta do something real quick. Damage, go, go. All right, cool. So once again, I'm not entirely sure, sure who this is, but it's kind of weird. But Haz is a non-standard Protoss player, and this is a 12 pool. All right, has Rex is 12 pooling ya. Game recognizes game here, but I feel like cheesers know how to handle getting cheesed, right? <sighs> All right, so let's see if he's gonna probe scout. Da -da 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 -da. Mr. Probe, you have a very important job this game. You don't know it, but it is true. Gateway and get some minerals he's not scouting yet he might do it after this trip maybe after he throws down the nexus on the one gate expand Ooh. all right protoss we're gonna see how this is held right we're gonna see a master class and how has is gonna try to hold against this 12 pool what he does what decisions he makes when he sees what's going on here is he getting a cyber core before expanding okay so now checking is he this is like checking for proxies man this is like, is Rex going to proxy hatch? Nope, doesn't seem to be doing that. That's cool. Come back and not scout at all still. Man, there are... Okay, well, the Lings are here. They're on the way, and that's a Nexus coming up back home from Haz. So... Yeah. All right, Probe, what are you going to see? going to see an Overlord. You're going to see... Nothing. You see nothing. Your scout's a little late, and guess what's gonna show up at your front door right about now? Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up! Oh. Chrono boost the zealot! Oh my gosh! Chrono boost the zealot! Is that just GG? Wait, kill you! Oh, the probes came down to fight. They know this pro. They know this pylon staying alive is the most important thing in the history of the world right now. The, all the probes got pulled off. Zealot is out. Okay. Okay. We're feeling safer. There's one Zealot out here. Is that a supply block? And he's supply blocked. But the Zealot's going to hold the wall. Oh, and the gateway on the other side is coming up. The probes are going to work. Can these lings actually knock this? They can. They can knock this down. Probes coming in to provide an additional wall here. They can kill this. Oh, man. This is tight. This is so tight in game two. And bow. Okay, so second gateway dead, but the probes are still fighting. Another gateway comes up. So Haz is doing the one thing he can do right now, which is buy time. Buy time to get an adept out. Buy time for these probes to actually get some money into the bank. So it can make something other than zealots here. And Rex, he's going home. He is <laughs> defeated. Wow. All right, so what did we learn here, Protoss players? If a 12 pool shows up and you have virtually no advance warning, Chrono Boost out a zealot. Bring some probes down because you're going to need to keep this pile on alive. you got to fight with all of your probes, basically, against these sixlings. You can kill them. If they engage with you, they will die and you will win. You can chase them away, right? Finish off your wall as fast as you can and work as much as you can while keeping the lings away. <sighs> so Rex gets a third base to try to compensate for the fact that he went to a 12 pool and his economy is not super great right now. In fairness, he only made about 10 lings. So he didn't go crazy with it, which would not have ended well. 
Yeah, these adepts are... Oh, he's trying to get a surround here. Okay, so surround on that one. She dead. And this one, too, is probably going to get surrounded. Yep. All right. So both adepts die to slow lings, which nice control by Rex. I don't know if that sloppy by has or possibly just ridiculous control by Rex. Yeah. 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 Quick, the adepts are dead. Knock down the gateways. Haz is getting greedy. Haz only has one stalker, which he's using to kill an overlord. Oh, did he scout this? He did scout the Twilight Council. Alright, so... Oh my gosh, the control on Bob the Zealot here is disgustingly good. Alright, you can just move out just enough to kill a couple lings, and if the lings jump at you, back to the position. Back to hold position, Bob. Don't even look at him. Don't even look at the Zerglings. They're not worth your time. Show them your back. That's all they deserve. Third base, Ling's check to see doesn't exist. Rex is like, cool. So I've got three bases and 45 workers, and there is a Dark Shrine on the way. Likes them DTs. Maybe, maybe has an understanding that Rex isn't the person most likely to get spores up, you know? All right, speed's done, queens are here. That queen needs to help kill these? She does not, it dies anyway. So two drones go down, but guess what? It's two drones and eight lings for four adapts. That's pretty good if you're Rex. Those are trades you're gonna make every day. Now these zealots have to defend this third base with their lives because speed lings are out and there are no oracles around, nor was there another Stargate opening. Has doesn't Stargate open against Rex. Hmm, two games in a row now, hasn't happened. Zergling gonna try to mash their face in here against this stalker, but no. Zealots show up, cause their problems. Roaches on the way, Gleor Constitution coming in. Warp Prism far away, cause Robo's not done yet. Not too far away, I guess. It's gonna take forever to build. Wings really wanna kill that shield battery, can't do it. They're gonna do the dance. Dancing around and just being super annoying. I like this. Rex is active, yo. He is active. Has has actually lost more resources than Rex has here in game number two. Third gas saturated. Minerals on the third base for Rex not super hot. But he does need the gas more than he needs the minerals. Because Ravagers are gas heavy. Roaches are fairly gas expensive. I mean, if you consider Ravagers the cost of a roach plus the cost of the upgrade, it's a lot of gas. But guess who's here? The Dark Templar. Did he not? He does have a Spire. Are you serious? Two games in a row? He's like, well, I guess I don't need to worry about detection at seven minutes. There's no way Dark Templar could ever possibly harm me. Man, 13 drones died. 13. Rax, fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me twice. Wait. Let's do this accurately. Fool Rex once. Shame on Rex. Fool Rex. Oh, wait. No, I'm doing this wrong again. Ahem. Fool Rex once. Shame on has. Fool Rex twice. Shame on Rex. That's how this works. My gosh. More kills. More kills. Six kill. Dark Templar. I mean, it's just like... Rex is just like, well, I guess the Dark Templar went home. I guess maybe you could have figured the Warp Prism picked him up, but... Archons, Dark Templar, Zealots here defending this third. I love the Archon Zealot decision here against all these Lings. So good. Yeah, Rex is like, all right, well, that's probably not happening. That was Charge Lots. Immortals and Archons. Hey, look, Tier 3 units are out in about seven minutes. It'd be nice if Zerg players could get Ultras out at seven minutes. I guess it'd be more nice if, like, two Ultras were actually worth something, whereas two Archons are pretty good. That's, I guess that's the difference here. Did we just lift some... We lifted some probes in. Man, look at this zealot. Hacking through. Plus one attack. Pretty good. Alright. So, Archon's up here doing bonus damage versus those biological zealots. Really just tanking and doing pretty good damage against the Lings and the Roaches especially. Warping in additional zealots here. Trying to save the Immortal. Pick it up! Ah, beautiful. Disgustingly good save there. But, is it too little too late? No! The shuttling on the Archons and the Immortals is disgusting. Disgusting! 
But Rex has decided the best way to handle these shenanigans is just to mash face as hard as you can. He's not wrong about this. You can't try to chase stuff down. You can't try to be where he's not. I mean... Uh, Rosabile gets a couple hits off on that immortal. That's pretty good stuff, I guess. Mm, but look at that army value. That is, gosh dang, 40 to 42 army value. What did we say about Road Ravager last game? What did we say? I believe we said if you have even supply with Road Ravager against Terran or Protoss, you're just going to lose. Yeah, man. 65 to 52 total workers. Just there it is. GG has wins our best of three. Two games to zero. And honestly, it looks really, really good doing so. Doesn't Stargate opening. Doesn't rely on any void rays. No carriers at all. I mean, that was who is still in here again. Just just traditional everything else, right? It's anything but Stargate. It's Archons. It's our Dark Templar. It is Zealots. It's Adepts. It's Stalkers. Sentries. All sorts of great stuff. Ob's finally out. Ob's is finally out. But yeah, I mean, end of the day, once again, resources lost. 7,200 for Rex. 4,700 for Haz. 40 drones died. I guess some of that was at the end of the game when it didn't matter. But a whole bunch of drones died to that DT attack. Once again, man, Rex... If you're going to beat Haz, throw down a Spore. Just have a Spore out. I know he didn't open Stargate. It's not going to help against Oracles, but like maybe at five minutes, just be like, I guess I should throw it on a Spore. I can afford three drones for a Spore at every one of my bases. And then you don't lose those drones, and it's so much easier to win. Bah. All right, cool. So that right there is going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.